Hello again, friends. Welcome to part two of day 56 concerning being a priest and a king unto God. Uh, I hope that you listened to uh, part one prior to this. Uh, we're going to be picking up uh, out of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Again, I'm going to read the scripture. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. What a powerful scripture, one that we can say amen to over and over and over again. Um, how does all this work and what does it all mean? Uh, that's why we're taking a few minutes here this morning as we explore this truth concerning being a priest and a king unto God. And I covered a lot in the uh, in the first session. I'm going to be picking it up here in part two concerning kings, being a king, part of the kingdom of God. Of course, we know that Jesus Christ, as I said earlier in the first podcast, Jesus is now fulfilling each of these roles in heaven. Uh, kings, what do kings do? Kings rule. Kings administrate. They make decrees. They enforce laws. They maintain order and they lead armies into battle against enemy forces. And though we may not have uh, uh, the, the order of kings as was in the day that that was written, we still do have uh, uh, leaders and so forth. But um, concerning the kingdom of God, that's the terminology that the, the, the scripture uses. And there is a reason for it. Uh, I want to take the word kingdom. And just look at the conjunction of both words, king, dumb, the domain, the dom, the domain of the king. A kingdom is the domain or the rule of the king. It's where the king rules. And the Bible says we've been taken out of darkness and brought into the kingdom of his son, the rule of Christ. So as we understand uh, the priesthood and, and kingship, uh, we need to understand, you know, we, we throw around the term kingdom all the time. Uh, I want you to take a little bit of time and really think about it, about, about, about the ramifications of that word. It's where the king rules. And Jesus made a statement um, there in Luke 17, verse 21, when he said, the kingdom of God is within you. You know, people were asking him, hey, Lord, when is, when is the kingdom coming? When are you going to deliver us from from the roman rule when are you going to set us free from this and set up the kingdom well <laughs> they were missing it because see they were looking for something to come from the outside they were looking for the for an outer manifestation and jesus came uh, and his preaching was that the kingdom of heaven is at hand it's here it's now it's touchable it's reachable it's graspable uh you can you can you can apprehend it and then went on to say things like, it's within you. So the rule of God is right now within us. And of course, there's going to be a time. Uh, the, the Bible is very clear about a time uh, in the fullness there when, when the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of men in this world that we see that uh, are just uh, the rulership and the domineering um, uh, overbearance of men, um, whether whether they be righteous governments or not, are all going to be submitted and taken over by the kingdom of God. And I'll give you a reference for that in a few minutes. In establishing this thing about uh, the king and his kingdom, the Bible tells us here in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, his kingdom is eternal. God's kingdom is eternal and it has no end. You know, we refer to Jesus as the king of kings and the lord of lords he's he's been raised up the bible says there uh, in philippians that because he humbled himself and became became obedient to the cross he was highly exalted above every other name that has been named in heaven earth and under the earth there is no name greater than the name of jesus and so he's referred to as the king of kings and the lord of lords Isaiah said uh, prophetically in verse in chapter nine of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment 
and with justice from henceforth, even forever. Revelation 11.5, that's the reference there that uh, says that the kingdoms of man are going to be brought into submission to King Jesus, where, wherein he will reign forever. It's a forever kingdom. It's not something that's going to just uh, pop up and be here for a while. Friends, when you enter God's kingdom and his kingdom begins to be established and set up in you, this is an eternal thing. You're not, there's not going to be any waffling on it. You're, you, this is going to be forever. Hallelujah. Uh, in Revelation 1, 6, it's reiterated once again that Jesus has made us to be priests and kings unto God the Father. Romans 5, 17, Jesus has empowered us to reign in life. Get that? Reign in life through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Life is not supposed to be reigning over you. you. You are supposed to be reigning in life. And we do that, you know, be, uh, through the power of God and the grace of God. Uh, we see in Revelation 20 concerning the resurrection of the saints. I'm trying to give you some supporting scriptures here concerning being a king. In, in, in verse 4 through 6, Revelation 20, I saw thrones and they sat upon them in the judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, and neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished, and this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he, and I hope that's a reference to you, that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. What a promise, my friends. This is a reference. This first resurrection is a reference to the saints of God, those that, uh, those that, leave this earth those that die in faith and and of course there's also a reference in there concerning those that have been martyred for their faith there is going to be a place for us uh, in the life to come and i hope that that reality affects the priorities of your life in this life now um, we're being trained to rule and reign with the lord and we're also priests unto God. Listen, be encouraged by these truths. I hope that they, uh, they work to establish something uh, really strong and positive in your life as a believer. Uh, God bless you as you go today. Think about these things. Uh, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next podcast, day 57. Be blessed.